Now, another one that people really uh, hate would be functions in general. So the first video that I made was actually about the function graph, the, the quadratic function graph. But this time, we're talking about functions in general. People will hate this sort of thing, especially composite functions. No, composite functions are fine for them. The one that they really hate would be inverse functions, and I understand why. It can get a bit complicated, but they all rely on one general formula that you just have to know. Just one general formula. Like, after you know this formula, everything will be a breeze for you. And today, I'm here to tell you that. So, um... The first one will be this, uh... Composite functions, the easier one. We'll go with the easier one first. So, um... How do you normally do something like this? So, like, the easiest way... Would be uh for the use we would be when you have something like this f g x or just f g fog or f g these are the three forms of it so um when you get something like this it is also what it actually means is f bracket g x that means um the function of the function of g so um So what you need to do is, normally when you do when they give you things like this, they will give you what f is and what g is. In this case, we um g is two x plus one. So uh, and f is x squared plus one. So if you get f g, what you're gonna do is um is f g x equals to f two x plus one. Because remember, gx is 2x plus 1. So since gx equals to 2x plus 1, we can just put it in. So now what we get is f2x plus 1. Think about it this way. These x values are related to each other. When one changes, the other one changes as well. For example, if you have f2 equals to... Uh, okay, fx equals to x squared plus 1, then f2 equals to 2, uh, 2 squared plus 1, and so on. Same with this. Even though we already have an x here, don't let that distract you. This is basically a filler, a filler, like I just call it a filler. The real value of your x is this. So, um, or we, to make it simple, just call it y, because fy equals to y squared plus 1 anyway. It's still an unknown. It's just to make it less confusing for you. Because some, a lot of people that complain to me about this thing are extremely confused by the value of x here. There's already an x here and there's already an x here. The truth is that, um, that uh, this x is not connected to the one you see here. It is not connected. They are separate entities. What is connected is the value itself here. This is your x. So, um, since your x here is 2x plus 1, then you get this. 2x plus 1 square plus 1. M remember this is your normal form? This is your x. Not, not this. The whole thing is your x. That is the only thing that you have to know. After that, it's all smooth sailing. It is all just... Normal, simple um, extension, simple expansion of your polynomials. And then you get your function. The next one is something called a pattern. Wait, before that, I, I, I've, got to, uh, I've got to remind you. Fg doesn't equal to gf. You do the number inside first and then do the number outside. Okay, that's all. So now it's the function pattern. Um... Some pattern, some some functions, uh, tend to have a pattern. What do I mean by that? Like um, like let's say that um, let's say you get uh, let's say you have f x equals to. <coughs> Uh, 
let's say fx equals to something, right? Equals, equals blah, 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 blah. And then, when after you keep going, right? Let's say at the second power, f, f square x, or, or also called as ff, right? You get x again. You get the original value here. What this means that it will keep going round and round and round and round. Why? But why will it keep going round and round and round? Because um, because if you get f two x equals to x, what happens to f three x? It equals to f three x is also is also f f f or f f square. We know what f square is. It is x. Do you see the pattern here? It goes back to the original one. And if you go to f4, it's the same thing again. f, 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 f. Or f square, f square. So it's f, so it's, uh, so it's just f square, which is x. There is a pattern going on. And this only happens when your image and object match each other after the first, or after the original function. The original function cannot be x. What do I mean by that? Um, well, technically it can, but it just ruins the whole purpose of a function in general, I guess. So, um, this function pattern, uh, you only need to take note of if you keep doing, if you, if you keep doing like f and then f square and then f3 and so on. And if you keep going on and on, it will uh it will soon you will soon form a pattern. The only thing I want to warn you is warn you is that it's not always going to be f squared that will give you the pattern. It can be f cube, f power four, and so on. It can go through multiple different phases first before it goes back to its original self. But once you get that, just know that the pattern will keep continuing. So let's say your pattern is at uh, starts with f five. So if you see f25, don't be worried. If you see f25, don't be worried. You don't, don't, don't assume that you're going to have to do f25 times in a row. All you have to do is do f5 five times. And since you already discovered earlier, for example, that your f5 equals to x, then your answer is x. But Anas, what if you what if I what if I only discover a pattern at f two and it asks for f seven? Well, you already know what f is, right? You only can get the pattern when you know what the original function is. And f seven equals to f f f six. F six is f two f two f two, so it's x. You see what I you see where I'm going here? Even though you know, even though you won't get the x value when you have a a number that's off the normal pattern. It's still a pattern. So, um, it's still gonna be the same value over and over again. Not only is the last, it not only is the, uh, not only is the one that you're looking at where it becomes x again, that's just the, that's just the signal that there is a pattern. If you see, if you see a function power becoming back to its, uh, where the object is the image, or basically x, if you have that, it means there is a pattern. It doesn't mean that's the only pattern. It means that, that there is a pattern. So like, if you have f equals to blah, 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 f2 equals to blah, 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 and f3 equals to x, then f8 is equal to f3, f3, f2, f2, f3, f3. And we know what f2, f3, f3 is, right? It's e we know f3 is x, so it's f2, x. We know what f2, x is already. So don't get worried if you have a power that is um, not in the pattern because it is actually in the pattern. The, 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 the thing that you're looking at just proves that there is a pattern. So the, the last two, these two are, are related. Um, when you have an image, when you have an object, when you have an object, this, this is the object, this thing is called the object. When your object and image are not in its general form, are not in its x form,
So don't get confused with the other one, where the one where the one that I showed you just now, the FJ thing. Because remember this this is fx equals to an original part. So fgx is equal to another whole thing, which is using this gx as your x. Right. That's a different thing. This one, they already they already put this in and then they already changed the value. So it's already simplified. So, so this is really your whole value. So you need um so these two are already related to each other. So it's not the same as this. It's, it's not the same as the complicated value for FG. The, the thing is, it's a, it, is, it might be last time, but it has already gone through a lot of processes. It has already gone through a lot of things to get this final value. So what you need to do is you need to undo it back to the original form. So how do you do that? The easiest way you want to do it is using the value y, uh, getting a new value called y. So remember, you can also use x is free one. That that will make it a lot more complicated. So we that's why we use y. So um, let y equals to three x over x plus one. Let y equal to your image. No, not your image, your object. So that means f y equals to the number here. But these are all x's. So we still can't get the answer yet. Because we want to make sure that y appears on both sides. So how do we do that, may you, you may ask. The truth is, um, the easiest way you can do it, I mean, no, the truth is, you can make, it, this is an equation. And while you can do even equation, you can play around with it. So instead of making it y equals to what, you can make it x equals to what. So how do you do that? Remember, when you want to do it, you cannot have x on both sides. You want x to be equal to a specific thing, you know, formulae. When you have formulae, you want, you want uh, the number that you're trying to find only appear on your left side. It cannot appear and again on your right side. You cannot have x equals to 1 over x. You want x, you want, you want to have x equals to 1. That is your formulae, for example. So, um, so with that in mind, I already did it here. You can look at it yourself. Uh, I just move it to the other side and multiply it. And, and if you remember what we did, we, we, we did with formula in junior tree or, or form tree, we move, uh, we move the, num the, the, the values which do not have x to the other side. And then we take the x out and factorize it. And then we divide the factorized part to the other side, you divide it by the, to the other side. So we, so that's how we get the x without having it appear on both sides. We just factorize, we take out the x from every single number and make it, make it its own. And then you will get x times whatever, you put the whatever down, divide it by the, uh, uh, divide it with the value of the left. So we get x equals to minus y over y minus 3. So, um, so with that in mind, we we know, so f y equals to seven. We know, uh, we know what the value of x is now. So sub x with the val with this value, and after that you just do it uh, one by one. You get slowly, and in the end you will get f x, uh, f y equals to two y plus one. And remember what I said, the num the the thing here is related to the to the value here. So if here is x, here is x, here is one, here is one, and if here is y, here is y. So if here is y and here is y, you can undo it back to x. So fx equals to 2x plus 1. Lastly will be inverse functions. And the thing about um but uh inverse functions is f and f uh inverse function means f minus 1. There are reflections on y equals x. What do I mean? If um let's say your function on the first graph is a straight line going this is uh going um uh this way. Then your inverse function will be going this way. Your x and y values are flipped. Okay? That's the main thing that you need to know. Your x and y values are flipped. So take that in mind. Your x and y values are flipped when you have an inverse function. So if this is your inverse function, okay, here's your normal function, your inverse function flips them both. Okay, the x and y values are exchanged, they are flipped. 
So inverse function flipped. X and Y becomes for an X. So um, we got that off the way. So many people like to um, hate this topic. Uh, this 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 thing called inverse functions, and that is only because they do not understand the full concept of inverse functions. Inverse functions is actually very easy. I'm serious. It's not like, it's not like those logarithm stuff. This is actually simple. All you have to do is understand the concept of flipping it. So first of all, you flip it. So let's say you have this one now. F x equals to two x plus four. I'm gonna do it again. Even though the answer is already here. You flip it, so you can get the inverse function. Right. Then what you do after that, is let y equals to thing again. But this time, it's a lot easier than the one we did earlier. Because you already have x as its original value. So after you go through all of that, then you will get um, x equals to y minus 4 over 2. So, there, so therefore, um, f minus 1, y equals to y minus 4 over 2. And again, they're related, so you just change it to x. So this is your inverse function. This is what happens when you flip it. This is, that, that's all. It will give you the same value. Like, when you, when you flip it, and you want to get and you want to turn this back to your normal value which is x then you will get this it's the same thing as this one just let y equal to to whatever value you have inside there the object and then um make it make x based on that y sub it in and then you get your image then you get your image because uh the the difference is normally that i said as i said normally you will get something like this and then they will ask you to find the inverse image of that. So, um, so all you have to do is you just flip it, and then you find the and then you find uh and then you turn this into y, and then you make it x, and because x already equals to a value, you just have to sub it in directly. You don't have to change anything, unlike this one where you have to go through a long process. But I said normally. When you get higher and higher up in the form, the questions will get harder, and you will you will be asked to turn things like this, things like this into inverse functions, which are a bit. Is um for the for the normal one, let y equal to the object, uh find x based on y. And then sub it in, and then find and then change all the values of y back into x in the end. And then for inverse functions, flip the two values first. Make your image your object. Make y based on that object, and um, change it, and then sub it back in. It's the same thing, just a bit simpler. For the hard, for the easy ones at least. And if you're an um. And sometimes, you don't even have to do that. I'm serious. Sometimes you don't even have to do that. For example, this one here. Um, g minus 1, 4 equals to y. Let g minus 1, 4 equals to y. So g, y equals to 4. Leave it as g, y for now. Because um, we're talking about a, a specific value here, remember. Um, this one is a bit more uh, how's ya? different. Where it, uh, This one combines both inverse and normal functions. So, um, in this case, g minus one, you um, you you want to find what uh the inverse image of four is, and you know the normal function. You wanna you wanna find what g minus one and four is. So we know that g y equals to four, right? And then we know that g x equals to 2x minus 6. So what you can do is, you just do this. Remember, 
This is even easier than the other ones. Even though it does involve inverse functions. Inverse functions isn't actually that hard. All you have to do is understand a single concept and after that you're completely done. This is why I, I uh, this is why normally when I make videos like this, if it's actually easy, I actually say it's easy. Because it, it really is. All you, to, all you have to do is understand the concept behind this axis. When, when, when can you flip it? When do you flip it? How do you flip it? When are these two related and when are they not? After that, then everything will be a breeze to you in SPM. So, and even UAC. So, um, yeah. Since, uh, since I know the concept well enough, I don't even look at the answer and I know I have to change it into Y. Since we know GY equals to 4 and GY equals to 2Y minus 6, then 2Y minus 6 equals to 4. Then after that, we just find Y. So we just find Y, so Y equals to 5. So G minus 1, 4 equals to Y, remember? So it is equal to 5. So the answer that you will get in the end is 5. For the rest, we just look at it yourself. I'm not going to teach those. 